And welcome back to another episode of the Nothing To Do Podcast. I am your host, Jeremy. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Juancito for coming on the show last week uh, with a little impromptu voice message. I hope y'all enjoyed that. I know he hopes y'all enjoyed that. Um, he really be wilding out sometimes. And I might have to check him for some of the shit that he came at me with, but... It's all good. It's all love. He'll make an appearance. You know, he'll make his appearances here and there on the show. Whenever he feels like it and he sees fit. Um, And now I got, it's funny because now I got other people hitting me up. Like, yo, 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 I got some shit to say. Um, This, that, and the third. So... Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll have maybe maybe we'll have some more um some more friends leave me some voice notes and some and some messages, um moving forward. But yo, can you believe the Supreme Court justice really just destroyed Hot Girl Summer in one fell swoop? Boom on a Friday, boom. So for those of you who live under a rock. Um, this past Friday, last Friday, June 27th or 26th, I, no, I lied, June, whatever, it was five fucking days ago. Today's June 29th, do the math. The Supreme Court ruled on a five to four ruling in favor of overturning Roe versus Wade. Now, this was was, I should say was, because it's over now, it was the constitutional right for women to have abortions, plain and simple. It's a constitutional right for basically women um, to decide whether or not they want to carry on uh, with, a pe- with a pregnancy or not. And clearly, clearly, um, motherfuckers was mad. Social media was lit up this past weekend. That was basically the vibe. Um, it's interesting, right? Um, it, it was led, obviously, by, like, a conservative, a very conservative um, Supreme Court that's in the house right now. And I was kind of, I was also Googling all that shit because I was like, yo, like, what the fuck? Because this is gonna, this might be giving. I'm gonna touch on this maybe a little bit later, and just throughout the show in general. Like, what the fuck? This is all happening under Biden's term. We all want to trip out of here and get. We got Sleepy Joe in here, and now we're like, yo, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? I don't know. On paper, this is looking like a messy president's uh, right now. But obviously, the Supreme Court doesn't work like that, right? Because there's people still on the there's justices still on the Supreme Court that are. Um, that are, you know, that were appointed during Bush's term, right? During Obama's term, term, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this is wild, though, right? This is kind of, this is a big, this is a big constitutional right, a law that we're imposing on another person, specifically on women's bodies, on what they can or cannot do on women's bo- with women's bodies, right? Um and even just like the tur the the abort so i've hmm. <laughs> i'm pro um i'm pro choice um or should i say uh you know, i i am pro choice i am pro choice the, the my the the concept of abortion as always as something that's kind of developed in in my head and like within recent years i've kind of um, been more sensitive to like the implications of an abortion. I remember, I, just like younger, even just the schooler I went to, you know, it's just like it's definitely more of a liberal, um, liberal uh, thought um process, if you will. I can't think of the word right now. Well, um, I've been up since like five a.m. Whatever, I digress. But. Uh, I can't believe I just said I digress. I was like, I felt just like the cringiness coming out of 
my body as those words were coming out of my mouth. And I, um, hey, yo, <laughs> hey, yo, <laughs> but, um, where was I? We're like five minutes into the show and I'm already, I, I'm, I'm already losing my train of thought. Abortion. Roe v. Wade. Right. Um, I, I never, th- like, I always thought it was just like, oh, you just go in and like you, you get an abortion and it's not that serious. And like within the past, like five, 10 years, it's just like, I've been, you know, talking to more women. I mean, I personally have benefited um, from uh, that type of birth control, if you will. Not necessarily an abortion, at least that, that I'm aware of. But, um, you know, Plan B's, you know, they say they save a lot of our lives and, you know, um, save us a lot, save us a lot of headache. Um, but it's it's a uh, it's interesting when you have actual legislation um or I, what was i talking about i was talking about the implications like i've been talking to even just more women it's just uh, about you know the chain like what they go through in terms of women that i know that have had abortions or or what they think of when, where their life starts at conception or at birth because that's obviously the big argument and you know i've had a friend tell me in the past it's just like where she was pro-choice but she also believes that in a lot of ways that life does kind of start at conception, that it's more, it's more than just like, you know, having a, a human being come out. It's just like your body, like you change as a person as soon as you become pregnant. Right. Like, and it's just like your, this life is forming, um, inside of you. And it's, and she talked about it on more of a spiritual level, which, which I thought was an interesting take on it. I mean, she was pro choice at the end of it. And, um, and yeah, but it's just like, it's wild. It's just like the, uh, the, the push, the push. I, I don't even know how something like this, how does this even go up for a vote? Like, why is this something that the Supreme Court chooses to vote on now? Right? Like, it's like, what the, like, I, I was honestly trying to look into that process. It's just like, all right, like, is the Supreme Court just bored? Shit? It's like, all right, what the, how the fuck are we going to piss people off today? Right? Um, but I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, I and even now, after like at this age that I'm at, I, I don't take a like the act of abortion as sort of lightly and naively, uh, as I used to when I was younger. Um, and maybe maybe I'm not pro-abortion in a lot of instances. Unless it depends who <laughs> who I get pregnant, right? <laughs> but um, uh, at the end of the day, it's just like that's that has nothing to do with me. That has nothing just with men in general. It has nothing to do with um, with uh, it's just like a, a, that's not something we we can't make that choice for other people, and it's just like, and again, it just seems like one of those things. Like it's. Just with politics and the media in general, it's just like now it's just something to to take, I don't know if take away attention is the right word, but it's just like, I don't know, I just feel like our priorities are fucked up right now. That we're, The fact, forget what your stance is on it right now, but just the fact that we're even, like that, that was a case that was brought up in front of the Supreme Court, and I don't understand all of the context behind it. Um, and I'm coming to you... Damn near ten days late on this, just because obviously it's just like this was just so in everybody's face for the last fucking five days, um, and now apparently it's the hardest time to be a woman in America, which is a whole another argument that I don't feel like touching today, <laughs> um, because a lot of the outrage too just felt like, remember that lady when after they announced Trump getting um, getting elected. And, it, and, uh, and she was just like, it was just this fucking lesbian fucking white woman. Just like, no, like, yo, like your life is going to change so much. Right. Um, which I, I know saying this is going to get people mad, but yo, it's just like, also shut the fuck up. Like, but then I also think about it. It's just like people or were so quick to go to social media. I had I had my one social media outrage two years ago, right? Because 
And that was with the whole George Floyd thing. I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of my little listeners that know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Um, and sort of, sh- sort of kind of where I stand when it comes to race and race politics and discrimination in the USA and what I think about that as a whole. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, there's a, ve- a lot of very, um, it was fucking insufferable <laughs> as, mu- as, as much as like, I agree with the sentiment of sort of the anger behind this decision. Like, it's just like, shut the fuck up for a second. Um, or maybe, and maybe that's just me being a dickhead. Maybe I'm just like, I don't know, because I went through that phase for a second, right, for like two years. But then I also kind of realized how fake a lot of this social media, um, these, uh, you know, this social media justice warriors, how they look and sound, and a lot of the times what it is in real life. Um, I mean, I talked about this like a month ago on the show with the whole BLM shit. Um... But yeah, it's just also like the like the hypocrisy, like, like yo, like these people are fighting and fucking standing so hard over abortion, but it's just like we don't even have we we've been in like a baby shortage formula. Um, our foster system, our foster care system is in the shit. It's just like yeah, we really standing really hard for like unborn children, but it's just like once they're in the world, it's just like all right. Here you go, which is weird. And unfortunately, what this ends up just affecting, because people are still going to get abortions, right? Like, what's going to happen now, right? <laughs> what's going to happen now is going to be like fucking prohibition or some shit, right? Where you just got to go to speakeasies to get aborted, and you might fuck around and just get some bad moonshine and fucking go blind, right? But what's going to end up happening is you're just going to like, this is you're gonna go to like a bodega, right? And you're gonna go up to the bodega and you'll be like, yo, Ak, Ak, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese over Reezy, uh, salt, pepper, ketchup on a roll. And be like, sure, sure. One bacon, egg, and cheese coming right up. And he presses the button, right? And you just fucking slide down into this dungeon, right? Into this fucking murky bodega basement. It's fucking everywhere. There's a guy in the corner, there's like two people in the corner over there just fucking playing dice. Um, the guy that greets you at the door, it's gonna, it's gonna be fucking like Riddell Ortiz, right? And he's gonna be wearing a fucking butcher's jacket, and he's gonna be holding a fucking coat hanger and a fork, and there's gonna be like an old mop bucket there. And it's gonna get done, <laughs> and then he's gonna be like, don't, hey, don't, for, don't forget the bev, never, 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 right? And then he's gonna hand you a fucking white claw and a shot of fucking Casamigos, so then you can cry yourself. Um, that poor lady can cry herself to sleep for that night. Um, and that's, I mean, it's, and it's going to be unsafe. Like, that's going to be, like, the vibe of it now. Because, like, really, like, that's, that is, um, it's not necessarily going to stop. It's just going to stop people from having safe abortions. Um, so, um, so, yeah, we're, like, we're heading into some very weird Heading. I mean, we've been there, right? We've fucking been there for the last six years, right? Since basically like the end of 2016, 2017. I mean, shit's been weird since I fucking moved to New York. And shit's gotten weirder since I got back. Um, and then now they, they're, apparently they overturned this other war- ruling. Um, there was this coach in, where was he? Where was this fucking coach? Where was this fucking coach? This coach... It was a high school coach. Um, I don't know the high school, but he was fired from his job because he would lead prayer on the 50-yard line uh, after games. And at first I was like, yo, why? And he, he, the high school fired him for that. Obviously, this brings up a lot of issues with like separation from church and state, right? Um, excuse me. But, um... Yeah, he was fired for that. And now some cr- the Supreme Court overturned his ruling. I don't know if he got his job back or not. Um, and is in favor of, like, doing that. And there's um, there's, there was also another ruling for uh, Catholic schools or religious schools in Maine being able um, 
to be eligible for state um, state led tuition, which is odd. And what happens with these? I think what what ends up happening with these um, you know, these prayer circles and slowly inching you know religion back into sort of the public sector on that level is just like you start weeding. It's weird. It's like it, it's a very nuanced way of ostracizing people now um, where sort of you have like, especially like, you know, in these Bible Belt states um, where, you know, your whole needs, obviously it's not mandatory, but it's there, but it's just like, you know, as a teacher, you know, like with those people, notice the people who do or don't come to these circles and then you get treated if a different way. And it's just like, a, it's a very slippery slope especially when it comes to like education um which I, I i think it's i think it's weird i mean at first when i read the story i was like yo he, this guy's leading prayer on um like i thought he was not leading prayer i thought he was just going up there and praying i was like, people do this shit all the time like why is he getting in trouble for this but apparently he was like encouraging students um it was optional apparently but he was encouraging students to um Damn, I'm losing lighting. I'm losing lighting. I'm losing lighting, folks. What the fuck? I'm losing lighting. Um. Yeah, he was encouraging students to 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 come on in here with them, to come in there with them, and um. But yeah, y'all like uh, women out here. I mean, yo, like, like at the end of the day, like that's that's a that's a woman that's a that's a woman's rights issue. And, um, whatever your opinion is as a man, when it comes to abortion, it's just like, at the end of the day, your opinion is your opinion, but it should always end. Whatever you say, whatever you say on your soapbox, or as a man, should always end in, but, uh, I'm not a girl, so it's, um, it's none of my business, so. And that's that. Now, um, you know. I command you to come into my mouth in the name of Jesus. That's, that's sort of the vibe now that uh, that the Supreme Courts are uh, are pushing out there. Yeah, um, ladies, I don't even know what to say. Um, not to you. I'm just saying in general right now. This happens a lot. I feel like to me right now when I record. Guys, I put my heart and, and soul into into this into this podcast, into these episodes, and sometimes I feel like it definitely doesn't come across. I definitely come across unprepared. Um, it sucks because it's like I had this whole throughout the day. I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna record today. I should probably talk about this, right? And I'm having, you know. I'm like thinking about what I'm going to say. Maybe I'm just like overthinking. Um, and part of it too, I've talked about it. It's just like sometimes it's hard talking about it by yourself, but it's just like I come in, I come into, I come in, I'm sitting down and I feel like, right, this is my, my safe place. This is, this is, I'm in my, my studio and my apartment with my stuff and I should be as, this should be like I should be at peak comfort in terms of what I want to put out. Maybe I'm just thinking too much about like certain points on whether they land or not or whether it's PC or not, or whether who's going to hear what or not. But I don't know sometimes I feel like I lose half of what I was thinking about when I'm actually recording. And I feel like this never was an issue before. Um which I'm trying to work towards. Maybe it's like my anxiety Maybe I'm, like, internalizing shit too much or overthinking shit too much. I don't know. But I'm trying. My I'm trying. Just know that I, I do this with a lot of love and care. And I, you know, I love doing this. I really do love doing this shit. And I just feel like it doesn't, when I, when I feel like, sometimes I feel like I finish recording. I feel like it doesn't come across that way. You know? Um... Yeah. I mean, shit. I mean, it's also been a fucking long day, right? Like, I've been up since fucking 
like since before five to get shit done, and then I worked all day, and it's fucking five thirty in the afternoon right now. Um, and I'm still by my dolo. Uh, yeah. Does it ever piss you off how, um, how happy certain people are all the time? <laughs> uh, like, so I go to this deli, right? This is a really good deli in Seekonk. They have great sandwiches. They're, like, fucking fantastically priced. Um, the portions are great. The sandwiches are super yummy. And it's the same, like, two or three people there. It's usually this one guy. And he's always just, like... he's Every time I go there, he's always just so, like... And I'll see it in line. Like, I'll be in line. And he knows everybody. He's there. And he's, like, chow. He's, like... Oh, how's your day, man? Like, how's it going? Oh, nice. Like, he'll, he'll, like, you won't even have to say your name for the order if you put it, if you place it ahead of time. He's like, oh, you're the, uh, you're the chicken salad, right? Oh, all right, here, here you go. And he seems like a young guy. He's, like, around my age, right? Every time. And he's always, like, I go, and then, like, it's always up, and then it's my turn to go up to the line, right? And I'm, like, hey, what's, he's, like, what's going on, brother? And I was, like, hey, what's up, man? And I'm just, like, bro, like, and just, all right, what's going on? I feel like a dick giving him bad energy back, right? So I try my best to reciprocate some positivity back his way, right? What's going on, man? How's your day going? I was like, you know, good, can't can't complain, right? It's a beautiful day out. This, that, and the third. All great. He's like, oh, you had this, right? He's like, oh, man. Like, I, he's like, I thought I was going to forget your name again, man. My, my, my fault, bro. He was like, you have a good one, brother. And this is, this isn't just like one day. This is not a good, this is every time I go there. And I go there on average like twice a week for lunch, at least before, like when I was, you know, with school still in session, I was working, I would go there for lunch, right? And every day I'm just like, bro, how do you do, like, do you own this spot? Is that how happy you are to be working the register here? Like you must own the spot. And you're just like, oh, this place is spot. And you're like, you're just always happy. Because this place is always lit. But if I had to put my money on it, that guy probably doesn't own this spot. <laughs> right? Um, and it's just like, bro, like, I don't even like, I don't even like talking, I don't even like saying more than two words to my Uber driver. Like, I don't care if you drive me from fucking Providence to Boston. Like, please don't fucking talk to me. My fucking headphones are on. And this guy, every day, I come into the fucking deli. Every fucking day. Not every every day I come into the deli. He's he's right there. What's going on, brother? Oh shit, I haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? How's everything? How's your day? It's like sick, bro. That's that's amazing. And it's just like and it and the thing is that it feels genuine. It doesn't feel like um it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like forced customer service. Like, his eyes aren't wide, and he's just like, how's your day? Hey, okay, say, thank you, please. Yeah, of course, yeah, you leave it. Yep, no. It doesn't feel like, it feels very, like, genuine, like he's, like, a genuinely nice guy. And I'm just like, oh, my God. What is wrong? Is, is there something, I feel like there's just something wrong with me at this point. That's what it is. There's something wrong with, there's, I'm just, <laughs> it's just my life I'm just upset with, I guess, right? Like, but it's just like, yo, like, where do you find the energy? And it's just like, and so it's, how's your day going? All right, this is, what What are your, like, you know, what are your top, I wonder what are your, like, what are your go-to responses when it's, um when you hear, like, well, how's it going? What's going on? How's your day? Like, in that, especially in that work setting, it's just, mine is just like, not bad. Can't complain. Uh, if it's like, nice, hey, it's a beautiful day. You know what? Not half bad. It's just like the most rehearsed fucking shit ever, right? I I'm I'm I need like I need better um I need better like uh hallway banter, if you will, right? Because my you know almost three o'clock day is almost over. It's a lot of that shit, right? Oh hey, tomorrow's Friday, right? Short day, short day, awesome. 
a lot of that shit. And um, my soul dies a little inside every time I have those interactions because I'm just like, ugh, what the fuck? Going back to what I was saying earlier, maybe half the time, maybe that's what it is. Maybe like, because I'm talking, like I brought up, I opened the show with like Roe v. Wade, the Roe v. Wade decision, right? Part of me did it because I felt like I had to address it on some level. I'm always talking about like current topical shit here, right? So I got to talk about it on some level. Um, I got to set the... Um, Set the tone, but it's just like some, and uh, I don't even. I I already forgot where my train of thought was going with this. Um, hmm. It's almost July Fourth, y'all. Yeah, I don't know what 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 I was saying before. <laughs> Yo, I'm out of my fucking mind. What I was um. Yeah, it's like, oh my god. I, I have this whole built thing thing in my head and I get here and like I I guess I have this picture of how my monologue is gonna go throughout the day and then I sit down and it's like I get it's like I'm in, I'm I'm like still shy in my element which is maddening sometimes I see because I, I felt like it wasn't like this when I first started the show two years ago. I feel like I can get my thoughts throughout better. And it, obviously, it does help having someone, like, to bounce shit back and forth with, right, when I was doing the show with Michael. Um, but it's, like, every time, like, maybe I'm, like, sometimes I feel like I'm trying too hard. Right? But it's just, like, I do want to get, like I said, I, 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 I put a lot of time and effort into this. This, this turn in... <laughs> This turned into uh, this turned into me fucking talking about Roe v. Wade into like, why can't I fucking make a point across now? Like, yeah, like I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Um, it is a fucking beautiful day though. I'm also coming. I'm coming into. I'm yeah. I'm, this is less than seven. This is less than seven days of uh. The last episode, I'm recording this at least. Like, I, I didn't give myself the two weeks as usual. So I'm trying. And I know last week, I think I cut it at, uh, like, 27 minutes. And again, I might cut it a, a little sooner. Oh, but. Yeah, man. It's funny, I was just, like, doing a lot of. So I said I was going to talk about this, right? I was talking. I was going to talk about like the Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. I brought this up before in the show, like a couple months ago. And it's just like, yo, like on paper, it's just, it looks like Sleepy Joe's out here losing the race against Trump. I'm gonna tell you that, like on paper, like well, the economy's in the shitter right now. We're in like a recession. Um, you had those photos. Uh, of those Haitians getting whipped by ICE, uh, by ICE officers earlier this year, or last year, you've done nothing really substantial to um to kind of overturn a lot of Trump's like anti asylum and refugee and immigrant policy, right? Um, what else? I think what pisses me off is just like. So it's just like I talked about this before, right? It's just like you, uh, you know, aside, like you ran, you ran on so many topics and platforms. You ran it a very trendy race, and so did Trump. But we just did at the time. We just didn't know that trend was an actual thing until he was elected, right? Um, it's just like when I think at when it when it comes down to it, it's like what I think. Like, do I think it's worse to run on a platform on a hateful platform to get elected, or to fake, or to fake it till you make it with a lot of like real issues that are going on that we're facing here in America? 
Mind you, and we're also like exper- we're about to f- experience a crazy food shortage, apparently, which is kind of nuts to think about. Um, with the war in Ukraine and COVID and all that shit, like we're apparently we're gonna see a really bad food shortage, which also this is a consp- a very uneducated, uninformed conspiracy theory that I have now. That because of this food shortage that is impending upon us, and people are saying that it's going to be worse than the pandemic itself, why these fucking fads of carnivore diets are starting to pop up. And you got these fucking... Bro, I swear to God, Liver King, he's an actor. He's got to be an actor. There's no way he is a real person. And I hope I'm wrong, because I saw a clip where he... I think he was on the on Jake Paul's podcast... And he was talking about why he started the diet, and he said it was because like one of his, um, one of his children were sick, was sick. I don't know with what, but like basically this diet changed his whole life and made him healthy. And like, but <laughs> I don't think that's what it is, yo. Like I, this guy, I saw this video of this guy fucking Liver King, get a perfect sear on a fucking like tomahawk steak. And he cooked it on a bed <laughs> of what looked like to be fucking cigarette at like half put out cigarette that are still like ash, like basically ashes on ashes. He put it in like it was like, yo, that sear, that is a Ruth's Chris level of sear and cook in like a, a level of cook on that steak. Right. Um. So, yeah, and, like, I've, I'm seeing all, and it's, like, starting to get, like, crazy pop, like, the carnivore diet starting to get crazy popular now. I know Joe Rogan was really going hard on it for a while. He's, he's not really, like, standing like crazy, but he would start, like, his year, I remember. He would start, like, his year every year, like, on a 30-day, like, carnivore diet. And be like, yeah, I feel fantastic. I would, I shit my brains out for the first week and a half. But after that, like, I kind of leveled off. Um... Yeah, you're not, and, like, not only are they, like, they're, like, kind of, it's, like, basically, like, these are, like, the insufferable vegans from before, and it's now just gone a full 180, and now it's carnivore shitting on vegans and vegetables and fruits and stuff like that, and they're just, like, the most insufferable people ever, and they're just, like, trying to discredit, like, eating fruit and, and, like, just, like, veggies are basically, like, not good for you, or as good as for you as fucking, you know, bull testicles and shit. And that's basically what they're priming us for right now. It's just like, yo, listen, you're going to not only are you, should you only eat meat because that's all we're going to have access to, but you got to make that shit last. You got to eat the liver. You got to eat the fucking organs. You got to eat the fucking testicle. That though, eat the heart, everything. Don't let shit go to waste because she's going to look, look real dark real quick out here soon. Um, Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Can't get shit the Aki way now. No more, right? That's why that's literally, that's literally going to be the vibe. It's, it's going to be that same guy. <laughs> it's going to be that same guy from all the fucking TikTok. It's going to be that Aki at all these fucking bodegas. It's like uh, <laughs> y'all played like Resident Evil. How it's the same, like no matter where you are on the map, it's just the same fucking Murray. Welcome. This motherfucker got a jacket just full of straps. Just fucking strapped out of his mind. Just like, I got this fucking shotgun. I got this fucking big ass suitcase. I got a grenade launch. I got a first aid spray. I got some green air. They throw, I got it. You need it. I got you. Same guy everywhere. He's going to be like, oh, it was good. <laughs> and the poor lady, the poor lady is going to be like fucking eight weeks pregnant. It's like, yeah, can I get a, um, <laughs> can I get a, a bacon, egg, and cheese. Uh, over easy. That's the that's the key word. That's like the um, that's the code word. Over easy, salt, pepper, ketchup on a roll. And, and the guy's gonna be like, sure, sure. First, you put the eggs on the grill. And then you fucking press the button, shoom. And you're fucking down and you can slide down into this fucking basement. Oh my god. And the, and and there's just gonna be fucking like <laughs> There's gonna be fucking like NBA young boy playing in the background. And there's gonna be fucking just like people running around. There's people fucking playing cards and dice here. 
There's a fucking bouncer at the door. Rodell, Rodell Jesus, the fucking bouncer. <laughs> and they <nigga>, got, <laughs> it's like, and <laughs> you hand them the fucking money or whatever. Dude comes out with a fucking plastic hanger and a fork and a fucking mop bucket. And he does whatever he does. And then he gives you a fucking, he gives you one of those punch t- tickets. Or it's like, you know, you get f- you get four, your fifth one's free. Fit, your fifth uh, your fifth abortion's free, right? <laughs> and then before you leave, it's your way. Can't forget the Bev. Never, never, never. Hand you the fucking white claw. And there you go. On with your day. Cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> and there you go. Like, that's going to be the vibe of, of getting abortion in America. Um, you know, it's funny. Going back on the topic of me overthinking topics on my podcast. Uh, I was even going to, I had this whole map up and I was going to tell you, you know, it's not too late. Cause I think, I guess the U S like, we're not, we're, I don't know. I guess we're, we're probably pretty far back. I don't know. Where is this map? You know what? I closed the tab, which means, oh no, it's right here. Yeah. It looks like we're still, we're taking a step back on, um, reproductive rights here in the U S cause it seems like basically all of Europe and even fucking China, like, you can basically get an abortion on request. I don't believe it. There's no way. In fucking China. In fucking... Oh, well, that makes sense because they have, like, fucking 7 billion people alone in China. So it's just like, they, they probably encourage those over there. Like, you probably get a, a fucking tax break <laughs> every time you fucking get one of those over there. Um, But, yeah. I mean, like, basically all of Europe... Why did it zoom me in? Basically, all of Europe is um is on board with uh you know women's rights out here in this piece. Uh, whoops, I lost the page. Yeah, all of them except for like Poland, where they only um do it uh you know to preserve health, whatever that means. What does that mean? To preserve health. Let's see. The laws of the countries in this category permit abortion on the basis of health or therapeutic grounds. But then they also have one which is coded in red. This is like a map I'm looking at. Um, to save a woman's life. So I thought, wouldn't that fall under health? Like maybe is it the health of the baby or the health of the woman? Is that the two? Dis- is that the distinction there? I don't know. Um. But yeah, yeah, we need more systems in place to actually like fucking help underprivileged children because that's what it is. That's not all what it is, okay? Because I've already told like it's some you need an abortion because you just fucking need one because you're 21 and you made a mistake and you're not ready for a kid, uh, and that's fine too. That's okay. That's a woman's right to choose, right? And I can't even be a hypocrite and be like, oh, you got to be responsible. Because, hey, because listen, at the same time, if you uh, you have, I think you have the right to be a deadbeat if you don't, if your shorty wants to keep the kid. Definitely. Do you? Like, if you have a kid on accident, like I'm pregnant and you guys are going back and forth. Um, and you guys are going back and forth on whether you want to keep it for now for financial reasons, whatever this, that, and the third. Do you have the right to be a deadbeat if you say if you choose not to have it and she chooses to have it? Now, ultimately, is her choice, right? If yeah, I mean, if if the father gets no say in whether she wants to keep it or not, then he should at least have a say. On whether he wants to be a deadbeat or not, and I'm not, I'm not condoning deadbeatism in any way, shape, or form. But I'm saying it's a, it's uh it's fair, <laughs> it's fair, right? You're still a piece of shit. You're still a piece of shit. See, now I'm getting warm. Now, now, now the blood's flowing. Now that I got it out the way. Now that I got the like, I I made it public to you guys that. Sometimes I'm a mess when it comes to prepping for the show and I'm I'm thinking too hard. Um 
Now I feel like my th- my my thought process is going a little bit smoother and a little bit better. And who knows? Maybe I could be completely wrong. Um, because I do when I edit, I do play all this back, and it still more or less sounds the same as I thought it did before and after I edited it. But you guys could be here. You be like Jeremy. You actually sounded really fucking smart up until about twenty minutes in, when you just started rambling and and saying dumb shit and I don't know. Who cares? Um, I'm gonna say this now before I forget. I'm wrapping up now. Shout out to Joe fucking Zuko who just made me a phenomenal intro song. I I so as you guys know, I haven't had an intro song in a while. Uh, just because I don't want to deal with you know when the shit blows up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When the shit blows up, yeah. Um. I don't want to deal with it because I was using like a real song. I don't want to do any royalties, issues, copyright, whatever. So I was like, yo, Joe, he's a friend of mine. I was like, bro, I know you could fucking kill this shit if you have time. You know, I even I offered to, he's like, you know what, and I'll, I'll just do it. So like kudos, like, bro, he took time out of his fucking schedule. He worked, he's a working fucking man. And he made me an intro song. And he hit the nail on the fucking head. Shout out to you. Um... Uh, Joe, shout out to you. I don't have a clap, but this is a, a clapping sound, but this is the best I'm going to get for now. It's fucking nice out. Who's trying to chill? Smoke some loud. Let's fucking smoke some loud. Okay? Because he made a fucking fire-ass intro song, and I'm shouting him out now because I haven't decided... Because uh, I recorded it like an a, a, an intro sequence too to intro the show out now that I, um, I'm getting the YouTube shit on, on track. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on this episode or not. It might, it might not. I mean, at this point, you already know if it is or not. But, um, but yeah, fucking, it was like, he texted me as soon as I pulled up, I had plans to record. He's like, yo, this is it right here. Um, you know, I don't know how it sounds. It might suck. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, bro, you hit the, this is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you so much. You fucking killed it. You did not let me down. I will see you this weekend at the July 4th. Um, and other than that, other shout-outs. Do I have any other shout-outs? I don't have any other shout-outs at the moment. Um, so until next time, you dirtbags, holla.